Good morning. Morning, Cappy, again. I think I might do this not regularly just to tell my schedule changes. Always the changing life of Cappy. The exciting life of Cappy, including retaining walls, mowing the yard, and cleaning out the garage. Oh, what an exciting life. Anyway, um, want to pass on something to younger generation because, as I always say, the old people, they've already screwed up. The life is over. But, Cappy, they could make changes and change the plot of the course. Like, humans make changes and admit they are wrong, In especially Americans? <laughs> Have you met the 48-year-old Karens? They're right about everything, including their sexless lives, their morbid obesity, and their student loan debt, and their jokes of degrees, and their laughably, horribly painful, meaningless lives. They, they're they wedded to that. You think I'm going to sell them? <clears throat> but more logically, it's for younger people because you're young. You have the majority of your life ahead and you're making some kind of important decisions now. And if you can make the right decisions earlier on in life, they have more time to bear fruit and you have a much better life than the colleagues I went to school with back in the 80s who are miserable and divorced. But they know better. They, got, they have a master's degree in happiness. <laughs> All right, that was very dark. So, all right. Outside the pursuit of the opposite sex, nearly all of you are going to, your number two investment, number two consumption of your time, labor, and resources is going to be, what are you going to do for a living? What are you going to do for a life? And um, that means you're going to spend a lot of time where? In school. And if you don't get this economic decision right, if you're not savvy with this one, you will ruin your life. But I, by the way, if you don't, here's a book. Have you seen the millennials? Have you seen the millennials? How not to become one? They chose poorly. And they majored in fart snip and studies and look at me and jerk off to myself in the window studies, whatever other studies they did. <clears throat> and, and it's empirical. I mean, do you want to become them? Do you want to be a 34-year-old living at home or still needing bailout money? I mean, do you want to become that? Well, the problem is the choices that's made. Uh, <clears throat> now, where I am somewhat sympathetic, actually highly sympathetic with the millennials and some of the Gen Zers, is that they were lied to by the boomers. And I'll also go so far as they kind of had an uphill battle. Now, we had the same uphill battle in you know, Gen X, but we weren't paying no $250 a credit. Um, <clears throat> but they, they basically, your elders have lied to you this entire time, consciously or not, and miss not forced you to, but really channeled you into making poor economic decisions into, uh, uh, uh channeling you kind of down this path where you, you're going to ruin at least the first half of your life. And so what I'd like to do aside from pursuing courtship and telling you the truth there, which if you want, you can go get my book, uh, the book of numbers, if you like. Let's talk about your, your career. All right. You are looking at kind of a cool revolution happening now, or at least an awakening where you have the great resignation. Where Zers, millennials, some Xers are saying, oh, this isn't worth it. I'm resigning. I'm not working. A lot of people are saying, nope. Oh, help wanted. And again, I'm, I'm kind of on and against both sides in this debate between employers and employees. Help wanted. What are you going to pay? $12 an hour? Can't live on that in San Francisco. And so as a young person, you're facing kind of a, a choice like, oh, wait. They forced me to go to school for 13 years. And then bachelor's required, master's preferred. Remember that Nazi Karen I was telling you about, the 48-year-old spinster who's lonely? Right, that's her. Right. And just like every other generation before you, you're like, boy, do I, I got to go and invest this kind of money and time. But whereas when my generation went to college, it, oh, gosh, banged it in our heads. You got to go to college, 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 college. Get an MBA, master's degree, master's preferred. And no one did a cost benefit analysis, largely because no, no one up until then had gone to college in the numbers and percentages or the lengths of time getting masters and doctorates in my journey. And it just keeps going. Everyone keeps going to college more. Well, now with the internet, 
you're starting to notice, hey, wait a minute. This isn't working well. If you pay attention, the millennials are, are an abject failure when it comes to this. And some people are starting to wake up and you're saying, well, wait, what do I do? And, and then above all else, is it worth it? Is this economic investment, is this transaction, is this worth my time to be going to school and college? And so that's why I want to point out to you, generally, no, it is not. <laughs> If you sit and let's just look at what you're being asked to do, okay? Let, let, and, and I'm going to try and make it at a level. I'm not trying to say you're dumb. I'm just saying you're young, okay? You're young, you know. But let me explain to you, <clears throat> without having the benefit of 30 years as an adult, what what's going on here, right? You are being asked to go to school, starting at the age of five until you are 18, so that is 13 years minimum. And you think, okay, almost. 15, let's just say 13 years of school. Don't you find it odd after they got you for eight hours a day, nine months out of a year with homework back at home and all that, they can't train you and give you one bleep and employable skill? Like you should be able, I understand like you're an eight-year-old. You're not going to be doing calculus. You're still learning your A, B, and Cs. All right, I got it. I got it. But by the time you're 18, don't you think after a 13-year prison sentence, you might pick up something so that you could walk right out of high school and find a job that would support you? Kind of like they did in the 40s and 50s. Oh, the horrible 40s and 50s where everything was bad. <clears throat> Maybe Jane Russell any day. And so, and, and it, it's not don't you kind of. It is. It's a tragedy. Now I'm not going to go why you know why you're in school. You could uh, you can look that up later. Why do they keep us in school for 13 years if not going to teach us anything? I, 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 short answer: Your parents want babysitters. That's the short answer. The politics and all that. But as it pertains to you and your career, you got to realize right off the bat the system, the structure, <clears throat> the educational industry, whatever you want to call it, is not geared to give you an employable skill. It is not you, but it's so much more education isn't all about the money. Shut up. You don't have the time or the life expectancy to screw up your life, life like the millennials. All right, that's where that ends. Where that thing is, it's not all about the money, you capitalist pig. Well, okay, do you want to be living at home at the age of 35? That is the primary reason for education. If you want to get lofty and well-rounded, become a cultured individual, go to the library, download a ton of podcasts. But while you're in prison, the least they could do is give you a skill like computer programming or accounting or anything like that, Right? But no, what do they do? Now you got to go to school again, but this time pay for it and pay anywhere on the cheap of like, say, $75 a credit to $350 a credit if you're dumb enough to go to Middlebury, which some people are and they got rich parents and you're not one of them. <clears throat> and then what do they tell you? Like, what are the old? They're still telling you this. They're still telling you this. Your guidance counselors, your teachers, your parents, your professor, whatever. I got follow your heart, buddy. We'll follow. And then, and then I swear I'm going to punch everyone in the face. This should be a law where anyone who uses this word gets punched in the face by the person. Like, the person nearest to them has a constitutional obligation, a duty to punch that person. Not too hard. Maybe they slap across the face. If anyone says it's my passion, you use the P word. You get someone got, oh, man, I'm closest to this guy. And he said passion. I got to go over there and deck him one. They're telling you to major what you're passionate about. Have you not learned? Think about it. If everyone does what they're passionate about, we're all going to be content creators and fangirls and writers and authors. And there won't be any engineers or accountants or mechanics. Or be Have you noticed the labor shortage? There's not a labor shortage of diversity and inclusion consultants. There's not a shortage of journalists. There is a shortage of electricians. There is a shortage of truck drive. Hey, and there's a, and by God, there's a shortage of CPAs, and which Pete, the guy you refused to invite to gatherings, if you could check out his channel, he's a CPA. There's a shortage of CPAs. So not only, right off the bat, right off the bat, you're not only having your youth pretty much squandered, 
But if you do get out of high school with no skills, no employable skills, right? You're now forced to go to college. Well, what do they do? They again channel you not to get employable skills. All right. So then you graduate with student loan debt and no financial capacity or means by which to pay back that debt. That's ultimately the main reason why it has to be a financial decision and not, hey, well, major, what I'm passionate about. I really have to check. Oh, hey, by the way, don't know if you've noticed, we've been trying to help the whatever, the children, the whales, the minorities, whatever. You're not going to save them, okay? <laughs> You're, but you might want to save yourself. All these colleges, idiots going, I'm going to save the planet, make a difference. You can't even save yourself. Now we got to bail you out. The hypocrisy. But then it gets worse. And then this, so already you are at a huge disadvantage. So let me explain to you what you're now, the next wall, the next dragon you get to slay. And that is they make it impossible for you to get a job. And I do mean this. Now, we've always talked about progressive credentialism, meaning requiring progressively more and more ludicrous levels of uh, education in order to apply for a job. But I saw an article, and that's what spurred this little rant here. <clears throat> oh, no, geez, there's a pilot shortage. <sighs> now, I remember, because I was a guy at one time, you know, I was young, a young guy, I'm still a guy. What guy doesn't want to become a pilot? So it, it flirts with every man's mind, uh, and it flirted with my mind. Like, yeah, I, I got a buddy. I said, "What does it take to become a pilot?" And this this buddy of mine, he's like, oh. <laughs> "You gotta pay for school. It's expensive. You gotta get a billion hours flight training. You gotta fart the right way. You gotta get all this medical stuff done." Now I understand you want to make sure your pilots are good, but when he went through just how expensive it was to become a pilot, I'm like, "No, no way." May I point out another thing, a doctor. You know, oh, there's not enough surgeons, not enough doctors. Well, why do you have them require an undergrad? Why do you require them go to undergrad? Get them right out of high school, okay? Get the, get the legit kids who got their, their dope straight together, and you send them off to med school. Oh, no, there's not enough dentists. There's not enough nurses. Why are you requiring two years prereqs? And I think Pete, <clears throat> the guy you refused to invite to social gatherings, will talk about this. There's a shortage of accountants and CPAs. Well, why does the CPA society increasingly require more and more? In the olden days, let me tell you about the olden days, all right? Tell me, kids, would this sound fun? There's an article about CPA number, like you get a license, uh, CPA number four. It was like one of the first digits. He passed away, very old man. You know, what his degree in education was when he when he took the CPA exam, he had an associate's. Now pretty much every CPA state board requires a master's degree. And then they all bitch and whine that there's not enough accounts to go around. There's not enough tradesmen. Have you looked into like, oh well, you gotta you gotta tutor under this guy or work for the the union. <clears throat> you have to go to training for this, and then you need 5,000 hours or whatever it is, become a journeyman. And then all the other trade uh, tradesmen don't want to give you experience because then you go work for the competition. And all these requirements that even if you're a great kid coming out of high school and you're willing to work hard and you're intelligent enough, no one's going to train you to do a job. No one. Training programs, what are those? They require so much BS and overly priced education <clears throat> that it's impossible for most people to go and get a job. The only way, I mean, I remember this one time I was over in the Twin Cities and this one kid's like, I'm going to become a pilot. I'm like, really? How are you going to afford? Well, my dad. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. You are a 23 year old who drives an infinity. <laughs> and where I, where I call hypocrisy and BS and maybe heads ought to roll when, when Comadon Cappy comes to town is uh the uh oh shoot what was it oh the, the okay here's the hypocrisy where i where i laugh 
is all these corporations are about how good corporate citizens they are for society. And we so work-life balance and ESG. And we're, we're not all about the profit. Well, why don't you make it easy for someone out of high school to come work for you? Why don't you? There was a time, mailroom to boardroom. I don't know if you remember that saying. You'd start in the mailroom and work your way up. And, and just, just so you know, young people, the corporations don't care about the environment. They don't care about gay pride, even though it's gay pride or gay uh, pride uh, month, uh, whatever. <clears throat> They're just in it for the money. If they actually did care, I mean, and, and, and I know some people at the corporations actually believe their own BS, like, we're here to be good global citizens. Hey, how about you make it so no one has to go to school for six plus 13, 20 freaking years to work for you? You really want to help out the younger generations? You want to help out your, your crazy idea? Pay them enough they can live. Right? I'm not saying you got to pay them $50 an hour, but could you get to like 15 or 20? And you could. You can watch my video, Nine Reasons You Can't Keep Employees or Nine Reasons You Can't Find Employees or something like that. It's not that hard, employers. It's not that hard. Don't have ridiculous education requirements. Maybe train your employees. Don't lie about the job duties and pay them enough money so they'll stick around. There, there's others. Right? But just just to, for, the, for the sake of my, the intended audience of this video, you are correct. Your suspicions are correct. It is nearly impossible to get any kind of real job or profession out in the United States because of the educational requirements and the training requirements are all outsourced to you. <clears throat> now, do not blame employers for the cost of college. That's your own damn fault. That's all you kids going there for the college experience. I'm going to become a poet. I'm going to pay. Where you view it as a as a consumption good. You're not going there as an invest. Vast, vast majority of you there. This happened to millennials. All the millennials believe their own ball sack. And then they all flooded the education industry. And they're all like, I can't wait to pay. This is the only thing in my life. I'm going to borrow money. I'm going to get scholarships. I'm going to get more government money. I'm going to use my life savings. And I'm going to throw it all at college. And then people are like, why is college so expensive? I don't know. We keep throwing all the money in the world at it. How about we just cut off student loans? No more scholarships. You got to pay cash. See what happens to the price of tuition then. Then everybody can afford it. <clears throat> All right, but that's uh, that's why it's expensive. <laughs> so that's not the employer's fault. All right, that's your own fault. All right, <clears throat> uh, but it is impossible. I mean, it's not impossible. All right, but you're looking at it. And you're like, this is not worth it. To what? Have to go and interview with Karen, the HR lady, who that? And in the ultimate insult, you've been trapped in school since you're five years old. You finally get out after. You know, at least 17 years for a bachelor's, if not 20 years for a master's. Or we're pushing two decades. All of your youth, okay, all your youth is gone, right? And you're like, you could not have any more education shoved up your ass. It's coming out of your nostrils now. It's like, when do I get to work? And what do you do? You got to go talk to, again, my spinster baron, 48-year-old colleague, Karen in HR, who's literally going to ask you what your favorite color is and why. And if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? What's your greatest strength? And now hold on, sit down. What's your greatest weakness? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that that truly worthless, useless human being that could just be expunged from society. <clears throat> it's an incredible insult and slap to the face. And what you start seeing is people aren't even going to college. I mean, God bless the boys. The boys are getting wise. Boys are getting hip to the job. They're not going to college. Why? Because why would you? It's not worth it. And if you do go now, unfortunately, those boys that do go to college, the majority of you are majoring in dumb stuff. But it's getting out there. And I want to keep promoting this so that you young kids don't waste your life and your time pursuing something that's never going to materialize. It's not going to be a false promise. <clears throat> so I'm not saying don't get an education. I'm not saying don't get a career. But what I am saying is, be one, be aware, to be confident in your decision not to participate. I wouldn't play this game. The, the game's rigged is kind of what I'm saying. 
I'd like to, you know, little Jimmy, what do you want to be? You want to, I want to become a firefighter. Whoa, hang on, Jimmy. Are you the right race? Are you the right gender? Ooh, well, now, do you have a degree in fire safety management? And soon you're like, no, <laughs> no. So now you got to choose what's right. And now, and so what, what do you do if not college? Because that's just what was beaten into your skulls. And a lot of you are like, well, I'm just going to play video is jerk off the porn, which frankly is better than going to college. Cause at least you're not in debt. At least you're not financially crippled for the rest of your life. I know I like to pick on the needs. So I'm like, I can't blame them. Needs neither on education, employed or in training. Show me the training programs. Oh, you mean the guy who spent four years jerking off to porn and living at his parents' place who has no debt? He literally has a higher net worth than nearly every kid coming out of college. So what do you what do you choose? What do you mean? Well, <clears throat> here's where our good friend the Bureau of Labor Statistics comes in. And you could always look up what type of school or not school, what type of career, what do they pay on average? And so you want to go where it pays, but preferably where you don't have to go to school. Preferably you don't have to go to college. Now, there are some legit, uh, legitimate degrees that you could go into, but you're kind of committing yourself down that path. But your engineering, <clears throat> computer programming, computer science type of degrees, um, if you got the chops for it, med school. But, dude, I can understand where you don't want to go to med school. <laughs> we need doctors. Why do you make it so expensive? Ah, ah. We need accounts. Why do y'all require masters? Ah, ah. I'm a boomer and I don't want people to be happy. I really think some of it's that too. The boomers are just despicable people. <clears throat> but if you're going to go to college, it's going to have to be, I got a book out there called Worthless Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major. You can go get that if you want. That'll help you out. But it's got to have a job at the end. So it really limits it like STEM, computers, uh, and accounting. Right? But luckily, where I think there is a fair amount of hope and, and a silver lining, and a big silver lining, is where you could skip college altogether and go do something else. You know, they're almost desperate enough where they might pay people a living wage. I'll be honest, you're just better. If you don't know what you want to study, you're better off going to McDonald's and just working part-time and living at home. You are, because you won't be in debt. <clears throat> but there's things like truck drivers, the trades, of course. Of course, you got to figure out which state and is it union or not. Um, I'll tell you, the trades are in dire, desperate need. But here's here's another thing with the trades. I'll tell you this. You're just going to have to be self-employed. But I got to work under someone for a while. I know, I know. It's not perfect. You're going you're to have to work with this boomer world they presented you somehow. But yeah, man, I'd go become a tradesman, a plumber, electrician, regular carpet. You could become a handyman. All right, there's another one. Uh, DT had a brilliant idea. He's like, you just become a handyman. What you think your your male colleagues and peers and anyone from your generation to my generation, you think any of the men there are real men and know how to assemble stuff? Do you know how many desperate housewives are out there waiting for their husband to like fix the lawn more? Do the lawn. Um. Change the oil in a car. Just being a handyman and assembling furniture that they buy on Ikea. The key thing is that you show up on time and you're responsible. That right there will make you the best tradesman ever. Because your competition is very low and very stupid in, in, in that industry. But it's going to take a couple years. But it ain't going to take no four years. Two years of which is, oh, I hate your white dick studies. Oh, are you straight? You're a bad, bad person. Marx is just a misunderstood genius. Ah. You could skip two years of that crap. And just get an actual real skill in trade. Truck driving. All right. Well, it doesn't pay that much. Yes, you have, you have to do the long haul shifts. But you know what? It's better to go to truck driving school for four weeks than it is to go to some sociology degree for four years. And so I'm, I'm not saying that you commit to your employer. And oh, by the way, this isn't this isn't the silver bullet. All right, it's not like oh, I'm a truck driver, everything's great. You're still gonna be dealing with stupid morons. You're still gonna be dealing with boomer bosses, right? but you're not gonna have eighty grand in debt tying you down. 
And you actually will have a skill or a trade <clears throat> in which that you could become self-employed. I guess this would be the final point. Understand that the uh, traditional institutions are, are traditional employers, a traditional corporate environment, corporate America. They're, I would say, corrupt to the point uh, that they're no longer tenable, meaning they're not worth going to. Now, you're going to have to work somewhere, all right? <clears throat> but if you ever tune into me and Chad Elkins, the Elkins Accounting Hour, by the way, which we're going to be doing tomorrow, <clears throat> we use an example of the, the big four. So allow me to explain this. It's going to take a little bit, but then you'll have an idea of, of how you should deploy your strategy of, of working in the future. In order to become a CPA, a CPA is is uh, one that could be self-employed, all right? You could go work for an employer, but if you get your CPA, it's like, man, you can be self-employed. But what you got to do is you got to work under an accountant for a year. You got to work under a CPA for a year in order to go and take, to qualify to take the test to become a CPA. So no more than 10 years ago, everyone wanted to work in what was called the big four. I'm old enough to remember it was a big six until they <laughs> went belly up with bankruptcy scandals and embezzlement. I understand accounting. You're so funny. You're so so bankrupt right now, non-existent. So in the olden days, oh, you want to get into the big four? You want to like was it Dolight and Touche, Pete Mar no, Pete Marwick, KMPG, um, Price Waterhouse, and Ernst and Young. Well, now you don't want no. Absolutely not. That was 10 years ago. Now the only reason you work for the big four is so that you get your year experience. Say you worked in public accounting, get qualified to take the CPA. Some of them will pay you for to take the CPA, and then you get the hell out. Why? Because the big four, which was previously the most prestigious position in, in employers and companies you could work in, in the industry, are absolutely co-opted with Marxist leftist politics. They are now racist, sexist organizations that promote women and minorities over men and, and whites. It, it's true. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Right. Uh, before that, even take away the politics. It was already backstabbing horrifically bad cultures and environments. They use their prestigious names uh, to underpay you. and get, But well, you're working for whatever. Pete Marwick. Uh, Grant, well, Grant Thornton is one of the big four. <laughs> It's not worth it. It's no longer worth it to hang your hat there. Get your experience if you want, but you don't You don't stay there. And that, I think, is the future of employment. And I could be wrong, <clears throat> but the future is, is going to be like this. As corporations become more political and less about meritocracy and profit and efficiency, you're going to be going and facing <clears throat> an employment world, regardless of where you are, that is just mentally ill, for lack of a better description. And you may not like how in the olden days, corporations were all about profit, but at least there was one goal, and that profit is what kept the business in business. And it was meritocratic. I work harder, and in theory, in theory, I would get whoever works the hardest gets promoted. Right now, and even that back in the day was co-opted with nepotism and corruption and all that. Right now, we just added up a slightly new layer of frosting of oh. Do you have black female lesbian vagina? Oh my God, you you're so brave. Here's some money. Excuse me, I, I work twice the amount of hours that person does. Oh yeah, well you have race. <clears throat> okay, fine. Um, so the, these these institutions, the corporate employment, traditional regular employment in America, that's not where you want to hang your hat. Fine, get there. Get your experience. Work as an apprentice under some drunk, alcoholic, can't show up, drug addict, meth head, tradesman out of Wyoming. Okay. But I repeat myself. <clears throat> Get your years experience that you need, and then you all strike out on your own. Like you could you could see this happening in many different areas. For example, auto mechanics. Like, we can't find diesel mechanics. Well, you know, there's a couple diesel places in Rapid City out here. They can't, oh, we can have fun. Well, what are you paying? $15 an hour. I'm like, $15 an hour to fix a tractor? Are you nuts? That's real knuckle busting work. So what do you do? All right, you go down. I don't know if the school minds has a diesel program, but whatever. You go to the tech school, you get your diesel certification. You go bust some knuckles, learn how to wrench on diesels for like two to three years. 
all right? And then you get your certifications beyond your degree. And after two to three years working for somebody, and then maybe, maybe, <clears throat> maybe you're up to $20 an hour. You strike out on your own. You start working on your own. And now you charge $60, $70 an hour. Maybe you got to get some tools. I'm aware, guys. Don't give me your excuse. But then you got to buy a shop and go, look at the dumb economist do that. No, I'm aware. Oh, my God. The previous video I did, build a nuclear power plant. I was talking about California. People are like, you can't put a nuclear power plant on an earthquake fault line. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. Really? <clears throat> you guys got me there. Oh, look out. I'm, I'm aware you might have to buy some equipment. Stop giving me your problems. Do you want to make $14 an hour? <laughs> or here's another one. Are you willing to travel? Are you willing to work in Alaska? Are you willing to, to work odd hours? Are you willing to work on the railroad? There's another one. Go work on the railroad. <clears throat> That's what I would do. I would, unless you want to become an engineer or a CPA or you know a doctor, I would avoid college like a fat chick with a bunch of lip and attitude <laughs> that's what i would do with a full-blown case of herpes just why ass avoid it because college is usually it, it is unless you're majoring in those things a complete losing proposition a horrifically bad investment and i would go and get the skills that the rest of society is going to need that corporations are not going to employ because they're too busy being political. They're too busy, whatever. <clears throat> Today, it's not white male day, all right? Diversity and inclusion, whatever. That's the current marketing thing. Lord knows what it's going to be 10 years from now. What corporations, are, maybe it's ESG. I don't know, whatever it is, you know what it's not going to be? Who worked the hardest and is the best. And so as these institutions of employment, so these employers become less and less tenable, you already see it. You know, must master's required, master's preferred, bachelor's required. We pay, it's starting pay $17 an hour. You can make that babysitting. <clears throat> as that becomes more and more delusional, you just avoid it. And you actually offer the real skills that society needs. And you know what's going to happen? I predict. Not only can you strike out on your own as being self-employed and offering your services directly to people, corporations are going to need to start contracting up because inevitably something like your Ford Motor Corporation. That's not to pick on Ford, but I'm sure somewhere at Ford Motor Corporation, they're forcing poor people who just want to assemble cars to take diversity and inclusion or sexual harassment training. OK. And then they, and, and these people don't want to do that. And then you're going to be like, well, but I actually know how to fix up and uh, transmissions. I know how to fix up transmissions. I know how to assemble them. They might come to you. You might have a transmission shop and they're going to outsource it to you. Why? Because they've become a political, dysfunctional, incompetent entity where the work doesn't get done. It becomes more of an altar to praying to whatever the current political zeitgeist is. Look that word up. And so why be part of that? Make a pit stop in corporate America. Get some, get your experience. Get some certifications, get the F out, and you start working on your own. So that's, that is the path to hope I would paint for you guys. Let's quickly go through the Super Chats. So link below is Enjoy the Decline. Um, you guys might like the book Bachelor Pad Economics. You have to look that one up. I also link to my two finance classes I offer on Teachable, Achieving Financial Excellence and Achieving Minimalism. By the way, you will all have to learn to do with less and be minimalist. So that course is down there. Joy Davis, oh, our pretty lady agent in the field. Five bucks. Good morning, Cappy. Thank you for all you do. Enjoy a cup of coffee on me. Oh, well, I got my Rooster Booster light brought to me by a transmission guy. I like how Pete, the guy who refused to invite to social gatherings, gas dropped below five bucks, but I'm not holding my breath. You don't drive, Pete. Where are you driving to? Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep those doggies scrolling. Boop, boop. Stripey Cat, uh, 10 Australian dollars. Great show, Cap, as always. Thank you, Stripey Cat. Uh, ass Bucket 62, five bucks. I wish Worthless came out way sooner. Well, it came out in 2011. I mean, I guess it could have come out sooner. I have a Worthless political science degree. I haven't used it at all. Work in the tech field. Got two certifications instead. Make bank now. There you go, guys. 
but I want to change the world. You can study political science for free and still have the same employability. They should have just handed my entire generation, here, here's a library card, because we didn't yet have the internet. This will save you untold amounts of money and time. Uh, oh, hang on. We got uh, 200 um, Singaporean dollars. Uh, I don't know what that is, U.S. Maybe I should just stay in Sweden. Oh, uh, Swedish kroners. Maybe I should just stay in Sweden with my IT and earn citizenship while the apocalypse takes place. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you're not in one of those whatever, barrios and neighborhoods where everyone burns and, and uh, does forcible bedroom fun time. Um, I get, I just can't stand the Norwegian country. It has nothing to do with the culture, though. Certainly that, too. I just, I just don't like the cold. I love never-ending summer. That would be great. <clears throat> but uh, once, once October would roll around, I'm like, off to Ibiza, off to Spain. Off to the south of Italy. Bye. Uh, Michael M. Five bucks movie recommendation for Cappy Thief. A 1981 movie starring James Caan. Caan. You can watch it for free on Pluto TV. All right. Maybe I'll watch that. Maybe I will. Uh, Ask Buck two bucks. I started college in 98. So, yeah, sooner. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's it. Tune in uh, tomorrow on the Elkins Accounting Hour. You can search for Elkins, the Elkins Accounting Hour, and I'll be there. What is it, 6? Are we doing it 6 Central Time? I don't know. It's ready to go. All right, I'll see you guys later. Toodles.